The Golden State Warriors have traded James Wiseman for Gary Payton the second? Yes, you heard that right. The Warriors have given up their 2022nd overall pick for a player that went undrafted nine years ago in 2016. This is madness, or is it? Before you get offended or develop bias, be sure to watch the whole video as you will be shocked at some of the details that I uncovered. This is absolutely crazy news that deserves an entire 15 minutes of video as it was a ridiculous roller coaster of a trade deadline. I'm sure the Blazers wouldn't mind funneling me some Toradol since I'm still suffering from trade night whiplash. The Warriors traded James Wiseman, the former number two overall pick, to the Detroit Pistons and in turn received Sadiq Bey, the 19th overall pick from the same draft, along with Kevin Knox. The Warriors then flipped Bay to the Hawks for five future second round picks and set their sights on Gary Payton II, who just signed with the Trailblazers at the end of last season. For three of the future second round picks, the Warriors just nabbed from the Hawks, as well as two future second round picks the Warriors owned from Memphis, plus Kevin Knox, the Warriors were able to snag GP2 from the Blazers. Seems like a hefty price. That leaves the Warriors with having given up James Wiseman and in turn received Gary Payton as well as two second round picks from the Atlanta Hawks. It's important to note these are from the Hawks as the Warriors are expecting the Hawks to have higher value picks than the Memphis picks they sent to Portland. Now if you're not thoroughly confused by this four team trade, wait, there's more. Gary Payton failed his physical with the Warriors due to a core injury which put the entire trade on pause. If this didn't go through, Wiseman would have to return to Golden State, Peyton to Portland, and basically everything had to have been undone. The Warriors, however, didn't want this outcome and sought to keep Peyton while pursuing other avenues to resolve the situation. While Gary Peyton was a beloved player by the Warriors fanbase, to sacrifice a second overall pick for GP2 seems like it might be a bit excessive. Then to add to that, we may not have GP2 play for the rest of the season. Oh man. There's a lot to unpackage here, so grab yourself a drink, a snack, relax, and let's unpack. First off, there's losing James Wiseman. Here's Draymond's message to Wiseman in a nutshell. To James Wiseman, man, not an ideal start to your NBA career. Being moved to the Detroit Pistons gives James an opportunity to restart that. In this trade, James Wiseman gets what he needs. The Warriors got what they need. James Wiseman needs to go somewhere where he can play, and he's not expected to compete at a championship level. It's happened for him in going to Detroit because he's super talented, super skilled. How do you see that development that everyone wants you to see? If you never get the reps yeah you can watch as much film as you want but you need the reps jimmy wise good luck you're a champion and i would just say man go into it with an open mind go into it hungry and go and be who james wiseman was expected to be coming out now most of what dre is saying here is true that part where he tells wiseman he's the champion is a bit of fluff since wiseman never actually played a single game that year the truth of the matter is that the Warriors having the second overall pick in 2020 might have been more of a curse than a blessing. I was actually shocked that a team that could compete for a championship the next year with the right free agents would even have a chance of landing a potential franchise player, but the dubs were pretty bad that year. Golden State could literally draft the next franchise cornerstone before the end of the Stephen Curry era. Between Anthony Edwards' inconsistence, James Wiseman's lack of playing history at the college level, and LaMelo's unorthodox path combined with drama surrounding his father and Steve Kerr, the Warriors were forced to make a decision I'm sure they would have liked to avoid if they could. No team wanted to trade up, which meant the Warriors were going to sink or swim. The Warriors received a chance to hit it out of the park with a top 3 lottery pick, and trade options were pretty much off the table. Despite some uncertainty, news out of the organization was that their goal was to get Anthony Edwards out of the top three if he became available. Unfortunately, Minnesota selected Edwards and left the Warriors to select between two players they were uncertain about. Golden State didn't really want Wiseman. He had the physical tools, 
but for a center to play ball with Golden State, he has to be defensive minded and looking to facilitate more than to score or it'll take a lot of playing time for them to fit into that role. Yes, they needed a center for rim protection, but you'd hardly get that from a young player, especially one with an offensive mindset. It's one thing to have the length to spike everything within a 10 foot radius of the basket, but it's a completely different scenario when you have to be able to read and predict the opposing team's offense without any experience. Lamelo was the obvious choice after Edwards, but the Warriors feared a lot of unnecessary and negative attention would be placed on the team and the risk wasn't worth the reward. They needed a secondary facilitator and someone to play in a supporting role they could develop to provide backup for a championship team, so a veteran point guard would have been ideal for Golden State. A talented facilitator, the Warriors didn't seem to buy into Lamelo's skill set to top it off, so they went with what they considered to be the less risky player in selecting James Wiseman. The reason they selected James is the same reason a lot of people go out to vote. That is, it's not so much that they drafted the guy that they wanted, as much as it is that they didn't draft the guy that they didn't want. They didn't want LaMelo Ball and to have to deal with his father, just as Vladi Divac of the Kings didn't want Luka because of issues with his father. There's no denying the talent of Wiseman, but his selection to the Golden State Warriors would come with a price. This selection showed that the Warriors valued their need at center more than their need for a facilitator on the second unit, a choice they would later regret. Besides, how bad of a fit could it be? The Dubs literally needed a true 7 foot center. So right off the bat, it's obvious Wiseman isn't the center the Warriors need him to be. He likes to score and he'll get rebounds. His positioning was off, his coverage wasn't great, and he committed tons of fouls. He also ended up being injured for a significant portion of his time with the Warriors. Add to that the fact that Steve Kerr wasn't in the business of letting rookies develop on the championship watch, this was just doom for Wiseman from the beginning. But Swish, what about Poole? He developed. Poole is a guard. How about Kaminga? Kaminga had shown very good defensive capabilities when he started with the Warriors. He had a few nuances but he was able to stay healthy enough to get the playing time he needed and functions well within the team offense and defense. Kaminga is much more valuable to the Warriors right now than any player off the bench not named Jordan Poole and it's closer than you think. The best thing for Wiseman would be to go to a team that will give him the opportunity to develop into the player he can become. The Warriors were trying to put him into a role that he just wasn't suited for, so a young team that had a need for a talented five could use him and develop him by providing playing time the Warriors couldn't afford. In comes Detroit. While they have Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart, Stewart is 6'9 and Duran is 6'11. Wiseman has skills Duran and Stewart can only dream of. Not many big men can put the ball on the ground and drive coast to coast for a slam. Wiseman was just not really allowed to do those things for Golden State for a myriad of reasons, including the lack of experience as well as the fact that this wouldn't be Wiseman's team. This is Curry's team, so Wiseman doesn't get to drive the offense. When it comes to a team like the Pistons, however, all bets are off and the player that emerges in Detroit will be that team's cornerstone. They do have a load of talented young players, however, so I would expect more of a meshing of the players from a team perspective. That's their quickest ticket to winning. These young kids should be able to play without ego and as such give each other an excellent opportunity to develop into a winning team. So unfortunately for James Wiseman, this was inevitable. I'm happy that he'll finally get playing time and look forward to watching him progress with the Pistons. Over his tenure with the Warriors, Wiseman averaged 10 points, 5 rebounds and 0.7 blocks in 18 minutes. That's a 20, 10 and 1.5 big man on the offensive end per 36 minutes. Think about that. Regarding the other details of the trade, I already covered that so no sense in going over it again here but GP2 coming back to Golden State was the most shocking end result anyone could have ever expected after Wiseman was sent on his way to a better situation and here's why. The Warriors have been so deep in luxury taxes they couldn't tell if they were wading through bills or swimming through Adam Silver's pockets. When Portland came up with an offer for GP2, the Warriors were just unable to match the exorbitant cost it would take to keep him as a part of the roster. That's an additional 130 million it would have cost Golden State to keep Peyton. They had no choice but to figure out how to save some cash from falling out of Lakers pockets. If Bob wanted to save Joe some money though, there is one thing he was missing. With all the calls these guys make between each other and other GMs for these trade deadlines, that's a lot of phone service. They could have switched to Mint Mobile, who I'm partnering with for today's video to save some cold, hard cash. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? 
You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who is also an owner, but let me quickly tell you how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. No more standing around waiting in line at a big wireless store. You can keep your current device and phone number and easily switch services. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. All Mint mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint will show you how much data you use each month and recommend plans that save you money. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Use my link in the description to get premium wireless starting at $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash swishculture. Stop paying more than you need to on your wireless bill and start saving big with Mint Mobile. The Warriors let Peyton walk with an open spot on the roster in case something surfaces in the buyout market. This actually turned out to be a good thing for the Warriors. Peyton ended up with a core injury similar to that of Damian Lillard during the offseason and had to end up getting surgery. Unlike Damian Lillard, however, he was not going to be ready to start the season for the Trailblazers and was going to be re-evaluated as the season progressed. While a lot of Warriors fans wanted Peyton back, I doubt many were aware of his predicament. Peyton didn't suit up for the Trailblazers this season until January 2nd of this year, a little over a month before the trade deadline. Even then, he only played a total of 15 games for the team this year, missing a total of 5 games between the time he became available and the trade to Golden State. The Warriors thought all was well with GP2, who's been averaging 4 points and 3 rebounds in 17 minutes with the Trailblazers. If this doesn't show you how much the Warriors value defense over offense for the current timeline, despite the fact that it would mean giving up a 7-footer with sky-high potential, I don't know what will. But it gets worse. Remember how I mentioned LaMelo Ball earlier? So he's thriving in Charlotte at the moment, averaging 23 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds in 35 minutes a night, shooting 36% from 3. Of these three, meaning the offensive-minded center, the defensive guard, and the offensive-minded scoring guard and facilitator in LaMelo Ball, the Warriors selected the low ceiling but high floor, aka ready now, defensive guard in Gary Payton II. This means that the Warriors are not convinced James Wiseman will be able to contribute in any fashion to the current timeline in any capacity they could use and are willing to sacrifice the second timeline to improve the chances that the team can win a championship either this year and or next. This means that Gary Payton would have to come in and contribute immediately to the team getting a better seed and then be healthy for the playoffs. This is where things get really problematic. After the trade deadline passed, news broke that the Portland Trailblazers were giving Gary Payton Tordal a painkiller and urging him to play through the pain which stemmed from his core injury not being completely healed. The Blazers, who are currently 12th in the West, are in danger of falling out of the playoffs completely without even having an opportunity through the play-in tournament. With this reality, they need all the help they can get. So to have an injured player tying up all this capital on a team that hasn't won diddly squat since Bill Walton 46 years ago and Damian Lillard likely trophy hunting a year or two, it was sink or swim. This team was desperate, so there was no surprise. With this revelation, the Warriors decided to put the trade on hold and per league rules, the only two options the Warriors have were to either one, waive GP2's physical and accept the trade as is, or two, veto the trade and return all trade assets back to their original teams. So how do you go from saying goodbye to a player and then take them back when the guy you traded them for turns out to be injured? Worse, how do you accept an injured player who isn't going to be able to do what you needed them to do in the first place? Which means the Warriors accepting the trade is them vetoing the trade on their part only. While reports are saying Peyton will be out 2-3 to three months, it's possible he may never fully recover from his core injury. Peyton averaged about 7 points and 3.5 rebounds in about the same number of minutes on the Warriors last year. 
That's quite a bit of difference in one year and shows that he's been severely impacted by the injury. The Warriors front office wanted him to stay. If Peyton had stayed on a much lower salary, the Warriors could have kept James Wiseman along with Peyton and possibly gone after someone else. As much as I like GP2, I don't think the Warriors should have to face the responsibility just about anyone would take a bag like that. The Warriors have basically decided they will keep Gary Payton despite the injury and despite the lack of availability, but they've been holding back on making it official because they want the Trailblazers to be held accountable for leaving out pertinent information with regards to GP2's health. Not every organization will treat its players like Golden State, and with the latest medical issues coming to the forefront, the Warriors seem to have found an avenue to make the Blazers pay. They've launched a complaint with the league, and the Blazers are currently under investigation. The punishment for the Blazers could be a loss of draft picks and or fines as the league sees fit. Peyton and the Blazers get into a toxic relationship and Wiseman and the Warriors end up paying for it. My hope is that Wiseman can get the development and playing time he needs with the Pistons. The Warriors are going to have to rough it out with Peyton on the bench and hope that he will be able to contribute in some capacity. We'll be lucky if he's ready by the playoffs and I believe that's what the Warriors are hoping. But it looks grim. It isn't often that a team comes out of the trade deadline and end up not only losing a valuable piece of the team's future, but not even getting what they thought they were getting in the form of player availability for the present. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Was this a trade you do every single time? Do the Warriors lose either way? Should the Warriors have taken GP2 back from the Trailblazers? Should the Warriors have taken Wiseman back from the Pistons? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Warriors and NBA content. Thanks for watching. Till next time, swish.